What it do, y'all? It's your boy E2 Blue coming back at you again one time, one time for the one time on this beautiful Saturday um, afternoon. Everybody's out shopping, getting their rest of their stuff for their Christmas. And um, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays to all of you guys. Um, hopefully it's a good one this year because COVID has really messed up a lot of things in which we've done this year. So we're not going to go there. Um, I know my son's going to be a happy camper this year because he's blessed and highly favored when it comes to gifts this year already. So um, before I get into the topic discussion about the matchups and things of this nature, I want to talk about um, the Jalen Smith thing. Now, they interviewed him and asked him about the game. And um, he basically said, mind you, with a smile on his face. <clears throat> oh, I didn't know the game was flexed to one o'clock. I thought we were still playing primetime. And then he said, hey, if Jerry Jones ain't worried about it, if, if Jerry Jones ain't worried about it, I'm not worried about it. So people got up in arms about that. My whole thing is this. One, he was smiling about it, so I, I really doubt that he didn't know. You know what I mean? He probably was just messing with the media. That's one thing. You can't take everything for face value. Another thing is, too, uh, we know that Jerry Jones is tripping about it because this team, I don't think, has ever been flexed out of a primetime game in their existence. But in all actuality, this team doesn't deserve to play primetime because they're not playing well this year. Neither have the 49ers, but the 49ers have one more win in the Dallas Cowboys. But but you look at the injuries on both teams, and both teams don't have their starting quarterback right now. And Nick Mullins is Nick Mullins. Um <laughs> so I can see why people, you know, were tripping about it because it's never happened before. But look at it like this. I guess the NFL looked at it like this. Well, if we play the Browns and the Giants, both of them are playing well right now. We know that I think, hell, the Browns got nine wins this year, which is crazy coming from four and 12 where they were before. Like, that's that's a hell of an improvement. So, you know, the better team is going to get the prime time. Look, but I don't think the Cowboys are going to be short of ratings either because – Look at it like this. Cowboys are going to get ratings because they're the Cowboys. People love to love them and people love to hate them. So I really I don't really don't think it matters. Now, the only thing I don't like about the 1 o'clock game is when there's another team playing on the same network, sometimes it doesn't show in my region. So I don't really get to watch it on TV. And I got to go through all these different streams of whatever crap to try to figure out how to watch the game. That's the only thing that pisses me off about it. But outside of that, it is what it is. Now, going into the matchup, um, Dallas Cowboys playing against the San Francisco 49ers in AT&T Stadium, 12 o'clock Central, 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And even though it's a home game, a lot of people are saying, well, San Francisco is going to win. We know that even with this team not having their top dogs, they're still a good team. They, they still find a way to come up with some things to win. They have a great young defensive coordinator, which I wish we had. <coughs> um, and then they just they they just play well together. They they play hard. They come to win. They're very scrappy, and they run the damn ball very well. And we know this Dallas Cowboy team has gotten run on all damn year. So we're gonna get into it. Now, first of all, I just want to talk about some key matchups. And we talked about Amari Cooper versus um, Richard Sherman. We know that um, Richard Sherman is not the same Richard Sherman from Seattle. Um, and he's definitely hasn't been the same since he's come back from his um, ACL. I mean, from his Achilles uh, rupture. He's taking a step back, which makes sense. I mean, and he's an older guy. But he's still good. He still um, has great ball awareness. And he's still right there where he needs to be. Now, he's going to play five, six yards off the ball <coughs> to give himself that cushion to um, catch up with the receiver, which makes sense for older DBs. Most of them do it that way because even Darrell Reeves did it too. Um, I think that um, Amari Cooper, being one of the best underrated route runners in this league, um, he's going to be able to catch that ball, and you give him that five, six-yard cushion, he's going to be able to twist around and make some plays on you. So, you know, as long as you get Amari Cooper that ball, he's going to do what he needs to do. And he's, I think after this game, he should be a 1,000-yard receiver. So, let's let's go with that. How about it? 
So, um, you look at their defense as a whole right now. Like I said, their young defense coordinator got them playing well, even without um, their top dog, Nick Bosa, on that defensive line. They still apply pressure. And to be honest with you, this year so far now that Nick Bosa's been injured, do y'all believe that they got a guy named Kerry Hyder? Does that, does that, does that, do y'all remember Kerry Hyder when he was with the Dallas Cowboys? He was just a rotational player for the Dallas Cowboys. But he leads the 49ers defense in sacks, seven and a half sacks for the 49ers. Kerry Hyder, a guy that was a rotational guy for us. Damn. It's funny how other teams know how to use these players and we don't. That's why I keep telling you guys, I don't think we got bad players on defense. I just think that we have coaching staffs that don't know how to utilize the players that we have. I've been saying that. And even with Jalen Smith, y'all give Jalen Smith so much shit. I just think that he's playing in the wrong spot. That's all that that's all it is. Because he's still leading the team in tackles. He does most of the time. It's just they ain't playing them right. But either way, ain't nobody gonna listen to me. So it is what it is. But I will say this. Going in this game on their defense, they play a wide nine. And if you guys remember the wide nine defense, um, that's what the Eagles played back when they had Chip Kelly as their coach. We used to see that all the time. Now, to counteract a wide nine, and and most of the time their ends are in a four-point stance, um, to say it in layman's terms, um, their defensive ends are a four-point stance in a wide nine, and they're actually outside of the tackle. And what they do is when the ball is snapped, they attack both the left and right side tackles to eliminate them to get to the quarterback. That is the whole purpose of the wide nine. Now, if the Cowboys don't pay attention to that, they'll mess around and, and get blindsided. Um, well, Dalton will get blindsided and get hurt again. But they have to they have to be ready for that. If you're watching the tape and you know that they're using the wide nine to counteract that, you run that ball straight up the damn middle. You use your inside guys to, to shield them off, and you bring a tight end over, chip him, slow that outside guy down, and run that ball straight through the middle. That way, that's how you um, elude the wide nine. That is the key. They're going to have to run that ball. I know Zeke Elliott has been um, slowed because of his calf injury and things of that nature, but it doesn't matter. Whether he's playing or not, you got Pollard. You got Rico Dowdle. Get these guys out here and do something. Run that ball. Run that ball. Run that damn ball. Period. Um, on our defense, in order for us to win this game against the San Francisco 49ers, they are literally going to have to stop the run. They got Raheem Mozart. They got Tevin Coleman. They got um, Jared McKinnon. Get these guys. Stop the run. Because they're going to run the ball all the time. They know the Dallas Cowboys are like dead last in the league against the run. And you know what kills me about that? As, as Mike Nolan, you're the defensive coordinator, right? At what point don't you just say, um, you know what? Why don't we just load the box? Why don't I... Why Why on third and one, you got two linebackers out there on the field and they're 10 yards off the ball? What the f are you doing? You load that damn box up and stop that run. You know what they're going to do. They're going to run the ball on third and one. They're not like the Cowboys where we throw a hitch to, to CeeDee Lamb on fourth and one. Why the hell would you do that? No other team does that. So you know that a team is going to run the ball on short yardage like that. So if you know they're going to do that, be smart and load it up. That's Mike Nolan, man. That's the, that's the scheme, man. That's how he got them lined up. I don't understand how you're a coordinator and know that your team is getting gashed in a run week in and week out, and you just keep allowing the shit to happen. That's why he got to go. <laughs> that's why he got to go. Now, that's the biggest key right there. On defense, they're going to have to stop that run get positive turnovers like they did in that um, Cincinnati game, get the ball back to your offense and let Andy Dalton throw this, throw the ball to the receivers because um, we know our receivers are going to catch the ball, but we also have to run on offense as well. Those are the key to victory right there against the San Francisco 49ers. 
Um, that's the best way I can say it. Now, um, <clears throat> and I told you how to elude the wild nine. That's how you do it. You got to run that ball straight up the middle. Um, it's really, it's not as hard as, as people think it is. I'm not a coach in this league and I know these things. So if I were the offensive coordinator, like Keller Moore, Keller Moore has to call a great game and he has to realize that he's going to have to run the ball in these situations like this. And you got to figure out ways of running the ball. You can't keep doing the same things over and over again. You got to use misdirections. You, you know, with your offensive line, not being a hundred percent, you have to, um, be creative with that. You gotta you gotta figure out ways of of eluding what the defense is throwing at you. So um that's all I got for now guys. Hopefully we'll win this game tomorrow. Um if not, hey it is what it is. Um we already at this point, like say if the season ends today, we have four picks in in the top one hundred. So we'll be fine. Um you look at next year with how dynamic our offense is, you really only need your defense to be a middle of the pack defense. They just need to be able to just do their job. And that's it. I think with a better coordinator, we'll be fine. But with that being said, Josh, your boy E2 Blue always keeping the real talk to y'all soon.